Hey friends, how's it going? Just thought I'd jump in here today and uh, gonna go on a little errand. I'm trying to keep this phone steady. The roads are just absolutely bombed out from all that rain we've had. Thought I'd hop in the old 6.5 wood weasel today and go on a little road trip. Just in the neighborhood, I ain't going far. But today's a, a good day. Uh, it's nice to be headed out and going somewhere. We haven't been going out much lately. And uh, today's gonna encompass some of my favorite things. Number one, I love driving around in this 6.5 wood weasel. That's number one. Number two, I love wearing my Poland hat. Number three, we're gonna go buy a power saw today. I found a power saw at a local classified hat. And I thought I'd scoop it up for the channel and we can work on it and play with it and port it. And number four, the wood weasel needs a wash pad. I'm, uh, this thing, I had to do a little off-roading the other day and uh, this thing's absolutely caked with mud. So I'm gonna run her through the car wash, give her a little bath. So this is what I'm doing today. Uh, I wanna show you guys the flooding, uh, massive flooding in my area. Um, could be worse, um, but it, it's it's pretty bad. There's a lot of standing water and uh, getting a little bit nervous. There is a Colorado low blowing in here tonight, tomorrow. We're supposed to get more rain. I'm hoping for the folks south of me that way. I'm hoping that they uh, don't get it because um, it could be really bad. They're talking about closing Highway 75. I don't know if they have yet. That's the main highway to the United States. So. Um, that runs north and south from my province. So, anyhow, friends, uh, just gonna go on a little ride along and uh, 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 smash and washboard. And uh, this is what we're doing today. It's showing you guys the extent of the flooding. They're forecasting another Colorado low here. Um, could be something, could be nothing, but. Um, if the ditches don't open, friends, we're in for a little bit of a party here. So, believe it or not, friends, this is a gravel highway. We got so much rain and snow during that three-day storm we just had that uh, this is what the roads have ended up looking like. Um, I had to I had to do a little back roading a couple days ago. And the road was so bad, I had to put this thing in four low and just crawl through the mud. So, you guys can see the extent of the flooding. It's uh, it's pretty bad. I'll show you guys the river on my way back after we go and grab this here power saw. That's what I'm talking about. Yes, I love a good car wash. Just pulled over here on the side road. I wanted to get you guys a good look at uh, the flooding that's going on here. It's pretty bad. I've never seen it like this. I've lived here for in this area for about 10 years i've never seen flooding or the river this high 
funny story. If any of you guys remember, last summer we were in a drought and we were on uh, rationed water, meaning um, they closed down all of our stand pipes and we had to haul from a really far away town. So it's kind of funny how things, you know, everything goes in circles and uh, this is a good example of that. So this is a drainage ditch here. This is the LaSalle River. As you can see, it's burst its banks. It's 100 feet that way. Now this river typically, I'm gonna show you guys, the, the bank is typically right there. And uh, it's flowing at least, that's a good sign. Uh, this river crest about four weeks ago, three weeks ago. And then we had that huge storm and uh, it just kind of came back up. So this is what we're dealing with here. You guys can see it's just ripping. I love this spot. It's just peaceful. A little hidden gem in the middle of nowhere. It's nice and quiet. Yeah, you guys can see it's uh it's just giving her. Let's look at the other side here. So yeah, same thing. Typically the river goes like this and it's just burst its banks. So they're uh, they're forecasting another Colorado low, which for us typically means precipitation. Yeah, I got my Poland hat on. And uh so I'm hoping it misses us. You guys can see it's starting to cloud up. It was nice and sunny this morning. It's been warm out. Well, warm for us. But anyhow, friends, I just I wanted to show you guys this. I'm going to show you the other bridge. Uh, that one's substantial. This, this one's very tall, and it's usually this one's usually not the problem. You guys can see it's uh, still got a couple feet till it. Uh, would take over the road. I'm not gonna pull over here, friends. This is pretty much a single lane road, but you guys can see it's actually dropped, I think. Yeah, it has. You guys can see right there the water marks. Here, I'll zoom you guys in. Right there, the water mark has actually dropped a little bit, so that's good. There's that neat little footbridge there across the way. And you guys can see it's pretty much touching the bottom of that footbridge. Anyhow, Reds, I wanted to show you that. Uh, we're coming up to the mighty LaSalle. Same river going up good old number two highway in Manitoba. As you guys can see, the river is extremely, extremely high. Well, I pulled over here. We got us a power saw. Uh, this is a saw that, I hope the wind's not too bad for you guys. I kind of got my hand cupped over the microphone. This is a saw I've always wanted to have on the channel. They're super common here. This would be the most common big, and I use the word big, uh, power saw that you find around here. They sold a bajillion of them. Well, this is the problem right now that we're faced with in my area. We have giant, super deep, this one's about 12, 10 feet deep drainage ditches here. But what happens is they don't thaw quick enough and the thaw upstream starts flowing and you end up with all these backed up ditches. Now I see that one at the corner there starting to bubble, so uh, we're pretty safe. Where this side of the road, for whatever reason, is completely thawed and running. See that? So. With any luck, these ditches will all uncork and our land will dry out. Okay, friends, I figured the wind was gonna be too bad uh, out on the road there, so figured I'd pop in the shop. You know, friends, with all that's gone on lately, it's really nice to be sitting here yakking with you guys. Um, feels good. 
my shop is in a state of disarray. Uh, everything's packed up for my big trip. Oh, well, um, we'll have to unpack and put everything back together, but that's fine. We can, we can do a video for today. That's no problem. What do I have here? Well, friends, I've never had one of these on the channel. This is a 365 Husqvarna 365 X Torque. Um, this is a super common saw here. I think this saw was probably the best bang for the buck that Husqvarna has ever had. Um, it's, it, it, it's just a great saw. It's great stock, don't get me wrong. Um, my buddy runs one of these and uh, he loves it. And it is, it's a great saw. It is, it is similar to the 365 Special. Now, one of the reasons why I grabbed this saw, friends, is I run a 365 Special, and often when I'm running that, and I say it's 65 cc's, that's that little orangutan ported 365 Special that I run. Um, people often comment and say, hey, uh, those are 72 cc's, they're not 65. Well, this is the 72 cc variant of the 365, it's a 365 X Torque. Um, this, for all intents and purposes, friends, this is a 372. Um, there are some differences, and I'd like to go over those with you and kind of share my thoughts on this power saw. Brand new, you used to be able to pick these up here. Remember, it's in Canadian dollars for about a thousand bucks, I think. Um, the 372 was about 300, 350 more, so, these definitely represented a really good value um, for the professional cutter or a firewood cutter. Let's uh, let's see what we got here. I'm gonna bring you guys in. We'll pop the top off. Okay, once again, don't mind the bench. It is what it is. Okay, so first thing, if any of you guys run 372s, you're gonna notice this is the same saw, basically. Now, the dead giveaway for an X-Torque is the decomp is on the top, okay? Uh, this is a low low top. Uh, I like a low top. Um, it's just easier when you're slung over it to file. Okay, there's your air filter. Underneath the hood, we have a standard 372 carb setup. Um, this thing's been used with a doll chain. Um, we're good with that though, right, friends? The nice thing is when you build saws and you're a saw porter is... It don't matter, right? If this if this saw was blown up and it's not, it it, it runs. Um, you know, I could just rebuild it, and that's half the fun for me. Actually, that's nine tenths of the fun. So, okay. Other than that, it's a standard three seventy two. Now there are some differences in the transfers, and I think we're gonna yank this saw apart um, down the road. I'd like to show you guys the differences in the transfers. And then maybe run this, run it stock, or, friends, um, I can convert this to a 372 original edition. Um, I do think I have a top cover so that it wouldn't have this. There are some differences, and I will go over them in a future video. Um, a lot of guys have done good content on that, but I figured I'd add my two cents into it. Um, there are differences between the X-Torque, which this is, and the original edition, um, most of it is similar, but the, the main difference, there's differences in the cases, um, the cylinder, the plastic's a little bit different, but other than that, they're pretty much the same saw. So, uh, let's fire this thing up and then I'll let you guys go. Um, it's typical of a Manitoba firewood saw. It has no time on it. Um, like, look at this thing, friends. I had to, I had to pick this thing up. Look at the bottom of it. It's not even really scratched or scuffed. Full choke. First thing I noticed when I went to go and buy this, the first thing I do, I pull on the recoil. This thing has gobs and gobs of compression. So right there, that tells me, barring taking a, a muffler off and having a look, this thing's probably in good shape. Okay, ready? Full choke.
try restart. Feels good. It's pretty good. I noticed the, uh, I don't know why friends, but I, I notice a lot of times I don't work on 372s that often. It's just not a ton of them around here. They are probably, when it comes to a modern saw, they're probably my favorite saw. I don't even think I have the right tools to fix this. Everything's still packed. Um, yeah, no, I don't. Hold on, I'm just checking here. Anyhow, friends, um, I noticed right away, when you get a new saw, look it over. That's loose. Sometimes these are stripped out. You might have to drill and tap them. If that's a problem, or if that's the case here, we'll fix it together. I like to buy saws solely for doing content to show you guys. Saw oil's good. It starts and runs nice. And like I said, friends, this thing's like brown noons. It, it, look how clean it is. So that's awesome. I'm super happy I had the chance to grab this. It's just nice to get out and about. Okay, friends. Thanks for coming back and hanging out in the saw shop. And uh, you guys can see it's cold out again. That storm's rolling in. I don't like it. Not one bit. Thanks for coming back and hanging out. Um, we'll play with this on the channel and do some stuff with it and just make it fun. Make it into a Tin Man style saw. Uh, I have plans for it. So, Anyhow, friends, as always, thanks for watching. Take her easy. Good to see you guys again. Later.